I'm with Dave Koenig. This is Paul Slacker's Good News Broadcast. Hi, how are you doing, Dave? Paul, I'm fabulous. And yourself? I'm good. I'm good. wonderful. And now that I'm speaking with you, I'm even better. Isn't that nice? Because you are a funny guy. Thank you very much. Tell us Thanks. what's happening. you got an upcoming show. I've seen you uh, appear in many different places, but uh, what's going on? My show, Hebrew School Dropout, <laughs> or How I Converted from Judaism to Catholicism and back to Judaism and lost those stubborn last 10 pounds, <laughs> is opening. Well, actually, it's not opening. It's going into previews okay. at the Actors Temple Theater on Saturday April 24th. I'm going to be doing two shows, a 3 o'clock matinee and an 8 o'clock evening performance, and that's going to kick off the, uh, the, the Actors Temple run, which is hopefully will uh, be uh, for quite some time. It's an open-ended run, and we're going to be doing three performances a week, and uh, I hope people come out, and I, I'm sure they will enjoy it. Is this a true story? Yeah, you know, it's funny because I'm doing this show. I'm doing the show at a little theater in Maplewood, New Jersey now to kind of you know, get it warmed up for the Actors Temple run. And it's going great. And after every performance, uh, <laughs> I get people come up to me and say, is it true? Is all of this true? And I say, of course it's true. You know, if it, if, if it weren't true, uh, you know, I'd make up a better story. It's, uh, it's absolutely true. Yeah, I... Uh, I went through a little midlife crisis, and unlike uh, most people who go out and get a blonde and, and a convertible, I, uh, I converted to Catholicism. And I was going to keep my conversion quiet. I wasn't going to tell anyone. I was just going to explore my faith, my new faith, quietly at my own pace. And God uh, had uh, other plans. And <laughs> shortly after my quiet conversion to Catholicism, I got hired as a host a national radio host on, a, on the Catholic Channel, which is a channel on Sirius Satellite Radio. And I was out of the closet as a convert, live coast-to-coast -coast on the air for about two years, and uh, working for the Catholic Church, an experience that in inevitably sent me running back to Temple. Okay. <laughs> interesting, very interesting. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's why I'm an interfaith minister. I can. Uh, Is that right? Uh, yeah, I am, and so I can. Uh, uh, so you know, we learn a little bit about everybody with all these different religions. Right, right. Well, it was it was an interesting. It certainly was an interesting experience, and uh, the uh, the Catholic Church uh, didn't quite know what to make of me, <laughs> frankly. <laughs> and uh, so, at any rate, I ended up converting back, and uh, that's what the show is about. Okay, and very interesting. Uh, what is the process of converting into Catholicism? Ah, well, I, for about six months, uh, about once a week, I went to see a Catholic priest, nice guy, and we would sit down, and for about uh, a couple hours, once a week, I would ask him every question I could think of about Catholicism. Actually, you know what? I asked him every question I could think of about Padre Pio. Do you know about Padre Pio? I don't know about Padre Pio. Oh, fascinating guy. This is, this is a Catholic priest, uh, an Italian guy from the 1920s who had superpowers. He, could, he had stigmata and he could levitate. So I would ask the priest, I would say, Let me ask, how did Padre Pio do that thing where he could appear simultaneously in two places at once? And is it true Padre Pio could fly? And tell me, in a fair fight, who would win, Batman or Padre Pio? So we did this for about six months, and then uh, after about six months, the guy told me I was ready to convert. <laughs> Actually, I think he was just uh, anxious to get back to his regular life, and I was getting on his nerves. <laughs> so uh, one, night, <laughs> one night, the night before Easter, I showed up at a church. They, they spritzed me with water. They put a cape on me, and bing, bang, boom, I was a Catholic. Oh, my God. I was a little disappointed. I went back the next week. They wouldn't let me still wear the cape. I wanted to. I, I like the cape. <laughs> I thought it would be a good advertisement for the Catholic Church if, you, if they just let me wear the cape everywhere I went for like a full year. But, uh, apparently, it's a one-time deal. Very interesting. Very interesting. It reminds me, though, I'm going to try to say a joke. All right, go right ahead. <laughs> I don't know how well I do. It's a Jesus Christ kind of a, a, a story. It's a story. All right. So, you know, Jesus was very popular, yeah. and uh, he had his coat, his cloak, or uh, maybe cape, uh, you know, he had his coat, and uh, uh, however, he was so popular, everybody would be, like, trying to hug him and hold him, but it, it, it got very torn and ripped. Mm -hmm. So he went down, uh, someone said, you know, you need a new coat, it doesn't look good. Go down to the tailor 
and the tailor will uh, he'll fix your uh, your coat or cloak or do something and help you here. Okay, so he goes down to the tailor, and the tailor says, "You know, Jesus, I've heard you're very successful. I am doing very well. I'm going to make you a new uh, cloak." <laughs> yeah. And so, uh, so Jesus says, "Oh, well, geez, that's so nice of you, and it'll be my gift to you because uh, you're doing such such good work." Mm-hmm. So Jesus goes out again, and he's. You will hear more and more people hearing about him, and is now his cloak a year later is very, very torn and ripped right. up, and so he goes back to the tailor, and the tailor goes, Jesus, and oh, the only thing I want you to do is tell people where you got your uh, beautiful uh, cloak. <laughs> your and, beautiful uh, yeah, and so the, he goes back to the tailor, and the tailor says, Jesus, yeah, so happy to see you. You've made me a very wealthy man, and he said, and I want to open up a store, and I want to call it Lord and Tailor. <laughs> See, that, that, that would have fit in perfectly on my radio show because when the, when the Catholics hired me to host the, a radio show on the Catholic channel because I felt a little out of place mm-hmm. I started booking all my friends to come on the show uh-huh. <laughs> so here's I'll give you a partial list of some of the friends I had on the show uh, who's that? on the Catholic channel yes Jackie Mason whoa Freddie Roman uh-huh. <laughs> Susie Essman David oh, wow. Steinberg Wow. Uh, Mayor Ed Koch. Uh-huh. Basically, I booked every Jew at the Friars Club <laughs> on the show. So we had we had David Brenner on the show, uh-huh. Uh-huh. and David Brenner comes on, uh-huh. and he tells us all about being a young Jewish boy growing up in a tough Irish Catholic neighborhood in Philadelphia, right? Uh, okay. And one day he's walking down the street in Philadelphia, and a big Irish kid comes running out of a Catholic church. And the kid runs up to Brenner, punches him in the nose, knocks him flat on his back. Mm-hmm. Brenner looks up. He says, "He says to the kid, what 'What'd you do that for?'" Kid says, because your people killed Christ. Brennan says, look, wait a minute. First of all, that was, that was like 2,000 years ago. Kid says, yeah, I know, but I just found out about it today. <laughs> <laughs> what is it about religious, what, what is it about religious humor? Let's talk about that. All right. What do you think about that? I mean, what, what is it? Uh, what are we laughing at? Well, I mean, hopefully we're laughing. And listen, what are, what are we all doing? We're all fumbling through this life, right? Trying to figure out our place and and our place uh, uh, with God and what God wants from us. And you know, and we don't know. We know God's God knows what He's doing, but we don't know what He's doing. That's the big. That's the. <laughs> that's the life's big joke right there. Right. Is we know He knows, but He's not telling us. <laughs> so we got to try and figure it out. Okay. And we're all stumbling around trying to figure this thing out. And, uh, you know, there's something inherently, hopefully, funny about that. Because if it's not funny, if you don't see the humor in that, then, then you're taking it so seriously that you start, you know, you know, you go a little nutty. People get a little nutty with this thing if they don't keep a sense of humor about it. In other words, they put the, you think a good way to handle uh, religion is to put it into some perspective. First of all, it's a very personal thing to begin with, isn't it? Exactly right. Of course, it's very personal. But listen, look at the, look at the Old Testament. Look at the Bible. Look at the look at the first Jew, Abraham. Right. Okay. The first guy, and look, he's having this conversation with God, mm-hmm. and God says, "You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go to this town. These people in this town are really getting on my nerves. <laughs> I'm going to wipe the whole town out." Uh-huh. And what does Abraham say? He says, "Really? He says, tell you what, would you wipe the whole town out if you found fifty good people in that town?" And God says, 50 good people? He says, no, no, I guess I would spare the town for 50. And Abraham says, okay, what about 40? How about 30? And he's going to go, and the whole thing, you would go back and read that. You know what that is? That's the first comedy routine ever written. <laughs> it's a vaudeville routine. <laughs> I mean, it's a perfect vaudeville routine. So right there, you gotta, you got to figure, you know, God's got a sense of humor. Why shouldn't we? All right. It's all good. And so getting back to your show, Yes. You were a dropout in the Hebrew school? I was a Hebrew school dropout, that's right. Well, I, when I was a kid, uh, my father was a kind of a restless guy, and we moved around a lot. So we were constantly on the move. And uh, I went to 33 different schools. I, had all, I was all over the map when I was a kid. So uh, I never, and I didn't have a, a real, my father was not a very devout man he was, although he was looking forward to the coming of the messiah okay because it was my father's belief that when the messiah finally did come this would perhaps bring about a permanent suspension of the alternate side of the street parking <laughs> so we we moved around a lot so i never even went to hebrew school that's the, i never got a bar mitzvah i went to hebrew school for about a month uh-huh. 
but uh, they were supposed to put me through the quickie course. I was 12 and a half. They were supposed to get, kind of give me the quickie course, and they stuck me in the class with the eight-year-olds, and so I was this big, gawky, you know, 12 and a half-year-old boy in a class with all these eight-year-olds, so I ended up dropping out. I ended up hanging out under the elevated subway tracks with the other Hebrew school dropouts, smoking <laughs> cigarettes and shooting craps and not being able to read Hebrew. So it was a rough, rough child that I had. Uh huh. Okay. And you introduce all this into your show. Yeah, it's all part of the show. It's all I tell the whole story in the show. It's a good show. You're going to enjoy. It. You're going to love this show. I, I've been doing it out in Maplewood at a little theater out there to kind of get it warmed up. I just got a very nice review in a local Maplewood uh, paper. They loved me out there. They said it was a, uh, what the heck did they say? They, they just loved the show, and they said it was a throwback to, uh, to the Borscht Belt. And, uh, anyway, they, they, they got a big kick out of the show. All right. Well, I, I'm very As happy. As will you, Paul. I, I'm sure I will, and I'm looking very much forward to Thank it. You. I'm a member of the temple, the Actors Temple there, and that's actually how we met. I love um, the Actors Temple. That's a great I, place. I love it myself immensely, and uh, it's a very open, warm, uh, considerate uh, uh, show uh, open to all. Yes, and it's uh, as is my show. <laughs> Great. <laughs> all right. Well, the address of the temple is what? What is that? Three thirty nine. Is it West Forty Seven? Yeah, it's three thirty nine West Forty Seventh Street. And the show uh, the previews begin April twenty fourth for Hebrew School Dropout at the Actors Temple, and you can go to Dave Koenig K O N I G. Uh, dot com and that'll give you the link to go to telecharge and you can get tickets there it's uh, it's going to be it's going to be a terrific run okay and david is is one very in addition to just hearing his conversation here this then he can ad lib like at any at 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 the at the drop of a uh, something <laughs> drop of a something <laughs> which is a terrific ad lib on your part Paul, right there questionable masterful. <laughs> masterful the way you pulled that out of a hat there <laughs> that's a beautiful thing dave well, thanks so much thank appreciate you it. so much friend that's uh, so nice of you to have me on thank All you right, i appreciate so it's it it's a big honor thanks dave okay paul Alrighty, thanks. bye bye, bye.